All right, welcome back to That's How You Feel podcast. We got a special one for y'all this week, and I know we've been pumped up for this one for sure. Our guest is a former JUCO head football coach for Powerhouse Independence Community College, which was featured on Netflix's high, highly popular docuseries, Last Chance You. He's the author of the highly rated and acclaimed book, Hate Me Now, Love Me Later. He's an entrepreneur in which he has his own whiskey and cigar line called Slap Dick Whiskey and Cigars. He also has his own podcast called Slap Dick Podcast that you can check out on all streaming platforms. All in all, this is one of the realest motherfuckers in the game and someone we have a lot of respect for. We welcome Coach Jason Brown to That's How You Feel Podcast. Thank you for joining the show, Coach. Hey, I appreciate you guys, man, for having me. Now, you might be the only person I know that can call me Slap Dick, and I'm going to take, take it as a compliment. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, it's all good, man. Um, if you, and just by the way, if you get another coaching job, you know, I'm, I'm about five foot 11, 185 pounds, don't and I run do like a, a four, seven forty. Don't, don't take um, that coach. Kind of shifty a little bit. So if you, if you need a, if you need a back or a little slot receiver or something, I'm available. Uh, I hear that. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. It don't look good. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So getting right into it. So you grew up in Compton, California, right? How, how was life going up there? Um, Man, different, you know. I mean, to me, it was uh, the norm. I mean, that's just what I knew. Uh, you know, you look back at it now after you've lived life a little bit. Uh, Stogie! And, uh, you know, you kind of look back at it and be like, well, shit, maybe I was just a, a product of my environment. I was a chameleon. And, uh, you know, I, I blended in with all walks of life. But like, but like people say, man, like I always say, real recognizes real. And I think – People always test you if they can see through you. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I was never uh, tested in that manner because I think real recognizes real. And I think they knew that I was genuine and, uh, and uh, you know, always had people's interest, best interest at heart. And just, uh, you know, like I said, I was the only white cat growing up in that area. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was the murder capital of the United States growing up. And, uh, and you know, that's what everybody else now – Sadly to say this, but this it's it's really a trending thing just because NWA, the white T-shirt, khakis, Cortez, all those things yeah. dropped. You know, the nation went crazy, and and that, and then you had Chicago and New Orleans and Houston and Dallas. All these people wanted to be like Compton, and that's just that's the truth. And a lot of people won't say that now because the youngsters don't even know how it really was, but. Um, yeah, you know, everybody wanted to be like Compton, man, St. Louis and all these places. And, uh, you know, and now Chicago's the murder cat. Well, you know, there's still yeah. no murder in fucking San Bernardino. But still, um, you know, there, there, there are these people that wanted to do all these things and say all this shit, but they don't really understand uh, how it really was, man. I mean, it was a different ball game then, uh, especially the only white cat. But like I said, they didn't look at me like that, you know what I mean, because I grew up there. So – little history i grew up it was all black and mexican and right. when my dad grew up there it was all white so the, t the transfer happened with t between like 1956 and like 75 80 so right. you know that's kind of the, when it went from white to brown to, or black to brown now it's brown mostly yeah. um so you know i still got my house there uh where i grew up and uh and, you know, it's just uh, one of those deals, man. It was just, uh, you know, I, never, I wouldn't change a thing, though. Right, right. No, you touched on a little bit, but, you know, living in the city late late 80s, early 90s, when NWA and Tupac were blowing up, you know, what was that like? I, I did, did you feel proud to come from there? Well, see, I'm way before the Tupac. Tupac wasn't even around. It was all right, NWA. Right. NWA was, uh, you know, that was like – Shit, we used to kick it all together, man. Ran in oh, the East and Yella, all them cats at, at the donut spot, man. And we that's when it was all that was you're talking this was 80, 84, 85, 86. So, you know, this was a little beforehand. And um, and then obviously NWA finally got together. They were together prior already, but they got together and finally Dre and everybody got with uh, you know, the white cat and Jerry Hell and then they became brought some money and then they became nwa officially and, and then that started you know 87 88 89 and then it blew up you know what i mean and then uh 
So it was, yeah, that was good, man. I mean, we started a lot of, we had a lot of trend setting uh, things. You know, people don't realize, man, I, I wrote in my book, yeah. the people that came from Compton, um, if people really did their history, uh, you know, arguably there's more famous people that have an, had an impact on the United States in some facet from Compton than any other city in America. And that's how you feel, I, coach? I mean, I put a lot of people in that in the book, and, and there's probably a lot of people that you two are little youngsters too. You probably don't even know half the people that came from there. I mean, do you know Marilyn Monroe's from Compton? Marilyn Monroe, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Do you know Kevin Costner's from Compton? No, I didn't know that either. Did you know that the NFL commissioner who created what the NFL is today um, is also from Compton? Him and my dad grew up together. He passed away. Um, Paul? His name is Pete Rosell. Well, Pete Rosell. So, yeah, he was before Paul Tagler. Okay. So, so, you know, there's, there's so many people. Duke Snyder from the, the great Dodger. Uh, yeah. You know, there's so many cats from, from Compton, man. That's Venus Serena. You know, you talk about yeah. all the rappers. You talk about all the basketball players in the yeah. NBA right now. James Harden, Westbrook, oh, yeah. Paul Cole, Kawhi Leonard. You, I mean, there's MVPs like after MVP from Compton. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of history from Compton. Um, a lot of actors. Um, and people don't realize that because, like I said, it was all white back in the day. And it was probably more one of the more affluent towns in L.A. And uh, it was like a ground breaker. It was like a cow town. It was all cows in Compton when I was a little kid. That's crazy. So, yeah. Man, I'm learning more, than, more for you than I would be opening a fucking book. <laughs> well, because educa cl classroom education is the most overrated fucking thing. Yeah, I, I, I was listening to your podcast and I heard you fucking emphasize that. That's, that's very true. I can, I can definitely... <laughs> to you. Yeah, no doubt. But as coach, let's get into your football career. You know, everybody talks about the great coach you are and the leader you are. You were a bad motherfucker too, right? Talk to us about your football career. Ah, oh, man. Uh, shit, man. You know, it was, I was a late bloomer, to be honest, man. I didn't play Pop Warner. I didn't play youth football besides flag. So, you know, I was just, a, I was actually a late bloomer, man. And uh, I don't think my, like, I think growing up, like where I grew up and, and playing with dudes that were, you know, there's cats that I grew up with that nobody's ever heard of that are better than right. NBA Hall of Famers and NFL Hall of Famers. You know what I mean? And, and, right. and rest in peace, a lot of those guys are gone and, and, uh, and, and dead now because of the life the streets uh, took them. But, you know, um, shit, man, that we grew up with people that used to dominate – NBA players that were known at the time still playing with the Lakers. I mean, we, I got story after story and I put them in the book a little bit, a few of them, but okay. you know, growing up with those guys, I think it makes you have to either shit or get off the pot, so to speak. Cause if right. you're going to, you're going to, you know, you eat or get eaten, you know what I mean? And, and uh, so I, I think it made me kind of be the person that I ended up being, you know what I mean? I was the only white boy out there dunking in the, in the gym and, <laughs> and, and just shit like that. So it was just a different, upbringing man I think it makes you have to work harder man and, and being around the talent level that was in that area growing up and you know you don't want to be the one getting clowned and especially you know I stick out like a sore thumb in, in, a, in a gym in Luders Park in Compton mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and uh so I had to had to go out there and, and and you know respect urge respect given you know what I'm saying yes sir now do you think that knowing that you grew up with a lot of players that, you know, had the talent to go D1 or even go pro, but either they got in trouble with the law, they uh, didn't have grades or whatever the case may be. Do you think that had a lot to do with you wanting to go to the Juco level and um, giving those players a second chance, the ones that do have the, the talent to go to that level? Yeah, a good question, man. You know, I've, I've been asked this in so many ways, man. You know, I, I just – I uh, I think – just growing up and who I am and who I was raised by, you know what I mean? People like that, uh, you know, it, being raised by the the biggest dope deal in United States history, it, it makes you kind of learn how to walk the walk and, and not talk the talk only, you know what I mean? It makes you actually do, not say. Uh, it makes you part of the solution, not the problem. Like, you, you learn, it teaches you how to create ways to figure shit out turn over rocks like i tell people every day you know this is a fucking result oriented life we live it, it, nobody gives a shit at the end of the day uh nobody cares i mean it's you either get it done or you don't you 
you graduate or you don't, you get a scholarship or you don't, you fucking, you start or you don't, you have the best podcast or you don't. I mean, this is results oriented, man. There's no, there's no fucking, you know, the winner fucks the prom queen, the loser jacks off. That's just how it goes. And, uh, there ain't no second place winner. Like nobody gives a fuck. And, And we've created that as society over the last 20 years. In my opinion, we've, we've started handing out, participation trophies and i think it's made the the country soft as baby shit and you know never used to be that way and so now you know where once an intimate setting was a a football locker room for instance um what was said in house stayed in house nowadays it's on a tweet blasting out your coach blasting out your teammate blasting out whoever because they want some clout they want some followers whatever it may be right where it used to be Coach, can I holler at you? Boom, boom, boom. If they didn't like that, then you go to the AD. But it stayed in-house. You don't go put it on Twitter. And, and that's what happened again at Florida State today. Yeah. Uh, if we have news. Yeah. yeah, so – and I know the head coach there pretty well. And, uh, you know, it, it's the third incident that's happened in the last four, five, six months. So is something happening there or are we just that soft as, 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 as generation now? And, and I'm leaning towards the latter. But – that's just uh, what what I what I think, but you know, I just to answer your question, man. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's 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 one of those deals where I'm as JUCO as JUCO gets. I don't know if it was because of seeing cats I grew up with get killed or go to jail mm-hmm. more than it was just me being who I was from where I was. And so uh, I think either way, I was gonna be that guy because of where I was brought up, where I was kind of drugged through the mud at and uh, where I developed tough skin. Okay, so touching on your career a little bit more. So you went to go play football for Hayes State University in Kansas, broke school records there. Uh, and then I, I read you had a short stint with the Chiefs and Giants. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, you know, I was a late bloomer, man. I, I, out of high school, I had an opportunity to go to University of Indiana. I didn't pass the SAT. Back in the day, right. way back in the early 90s, we had an opportunity to take what – what we would call what was called a prop 48 and I think Fresno State's doing it again but what it was was it basically allowed you to get in school without passing the ACT or SAT and then uh, basically do a year there and then uh, basically you become a qualifier by taking some classes so back in the day I had an opportunity to do that I was a knucklehead got caught up wrong shit wrong time wrong people did some time in jail. That was gone. That scholarship was done with. Damn. And went the JUCO route. And then, uh, you know, I, I would I wouldn't change it again, man. Shit happens for a reason, in my opinion. And and it created uh, who I am, and it allowed me to open eyes and see other things and uh, help other people. And if I wasn't brought up the way I was brought up, uh, I don't think I would ever had a shot at making it because after I played junior college. I went on and got a Division One scholarship, had offers, Hawaii, Marshall, different places at the time. This is 97, 98. So I ended up going to the University of New Mexico and get there, found out my Division One clock was cooked because I had started it way prior. So mm-hmm. I had to go to Division Two, and I went sight unseen, took my daughter with me, who was about 18 months old, and I drove across the country and I went to Fort Hayes State. The head coach at the time – um, Stogie, and he, he was a uh, Peyton Manning's quarterback coach at the University of Tennessee. So I knew I wanted a quarterback guy. I didn't even go take a trip or a visit. I just said, you know what? And that's what we did back then, man. We we didn't need to see. There was no social media, obviously, but we didn't have. We didn't. We didn't need to get our dick sucked. We we went with the guy we felt comfortable with over the phone recruiting, and we were like, you know what, coach? Fuck it. And I was an older kid. I was you know, 23, you know what I mean? I was older with a kid, and uh, I didn't have a lot of time to bullshit. So I, I, I went out there sight unseen, drove across the country, and, uh, you know, had two years there and, and had a free agent shot with the Chiefs and, and uh, got got to go around in the practice squad, got to go over to Europe, played arena football. I mean, yep. football's been great. I mean, it uh, – Right here in Bakersfield, you, right, Coach? What was that? You, you played in Bakersfield, right? Bakersfield Blitz, yeah. Yeah, we're right here in Portoville, California, so that's probably about 45 okay. minutes north. Yeah, so. Or south, I mean, 45 minutes south. Okay. So, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Right. So, yeah, we uh, – yeah, So, we yeah, just uh, – And then Hawaii, San Diego. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, coach. So that sounds like pretty successful, you know, great career. But how'd you get into coaching, man? How did that start? I mean, being the quarterback, mostly good quarterback transition to coaching. That's what it kind of looks like. But how'd you get into coaching? Man, you know what? Uh, my last year getting cut, man, I got cut over and over and over from at the, at the professional level. Then I, right. I was like, you know what? The last summer I went into going back to play arena ball, and I was like, you know what? I didn't work out at all. And I was like, so I went out in my, to my alma mater high school, and I went out and I started fucking playing. Uh, I was starting to coach around. Just co- I wasn't even coaching. I was actually just teaching kids how to do some things. You know, I'm 20, whatever, five, six, seven. And I'm like, I'm just showing these kids like uh, how to, some technique, fundamental, right. shit, little shit like that that I knew that I right. probably didn't even know then. But um, I kind of was like, man, I could do this shit. And I ended up coaching my freshman, my old alma mater. The head, I ended up getting the head job just because my buddy was the AD. And he was like, look, man, I need a coach. So I took over this freshman team that was really bad, and we had some talent. We had Easy E's son because um, uh, we had a couple other guys, and we had a kid named Orlando Scandrick who's been a 12-year NFL vet. Yep. And uh, and so I took those kids, man, and shit. We had the most successful freshman year in my first year coaching, and uh, in the school in a long time. So we 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 did some things. I was like, shit, I think I could do this, man. I, you know, I always say you either have it or you don't. It's called right. an it factor, and I said, you know what? Fuck it. I want to do this. And I didn't, I never, I had lost the love of playing already at that point. And I knew it was a business. Uh, I'm talking to certain people, Tony Gonzalez is, and people like that, that we grew up together playing against each other in high school. And when he was like the man at the Chiefs where I was at, I was like, you know what to do? And it's like, Coach JB, this is a business, man. This ain't no love of the game no more. Mm-hmm. And I said, yeah, I see it. And so, you know, I said, you know, I lost. I, I didn't want to play no more, man. I knew it was a business, and unless you're getting millions, it's like, man, nah, I have no real interest. And I think I said, right. I think coaching is my new passion, and that's what I ended up doing right away. And uh, and so I said, uh, fuck it, I want to coach. And so I brought it. I, I started right away, man, and I went right up real quick and ended up going straight into one year of high school at at, at, at a Verbum Day where. Um, I coached a kid, kid named Akeem Ayers, Super Bowl champ for the New England Patriots, played at okay. UCLA, and then a Reggie Dunn, played in the NFL, yep. uh, all-time NCAA kick return leader, um, 200-yard kickoffs in, in the same game against the same team, so uh, only person ever. So I coached some great, talented kids, and, uh, and I went right into JUCO, man, year two and year three, actually, of coaching ever. I went right into JUCO, and I did 13 years of Cali Juco and then I went out and did four, four and a half, five years of Juco in Kansas. And, um, you know, been a head coach for four years in the high school level in California. And, you know, just, uh, just said, you know, that's what I want to do, help kids. And I only, only want to coach in the inner city. I don't want to coach modern day or fucking St. Right, John. Right, right. So, coach, uh, how was that transition though? How was that transition going from coaching here in Cali, going to Kansas, man? That's, that's a, that's a big one right there, man. Yeah, you know, I, I knew buddies obviously playing in Kansas. I knew right, how the right. Juco system was, so I knew it was a different ball game. I knew there was dorm scholarships, meal plans, cafeteria. Okay, like it was, it's just a Division One of JUCO. And right, right. I said, you know what, I need to try that, um, and uh, and you know, got my foot in the door out there, and went out there, and, and then uh, ended up getting a head job in that league because of my recruiting prowess. And went from there, and then we had a most successful year in Independence history, and uh, or or run period, and the first bowl victory um, in Independence school history, and made a lot of 101 kids win Division One in three years, and national wow. record. I think that's the biggest one you're proud of, right? I think just oh yeah, uh, yeah. Just... Wins and losses mean deadly shit to yeah. me, bro. Right. I sleep at night knowing my kids don't go to jail, they don't go fucking, they don't get killed, and they graduate. Right. And that's the reason why I think it was so hard on them too, right? Definitely, most definitely, man. People, people don't realize, uh, you know, when you get to the four year level, and if you you see why this has happened, and I'm talk about it tomorrow on my podcast, but when they go to this school, they don't know anything. 
they do some stupid shit because they've never been told not to by their coach or parent. Mm -hmm. And they've been enabled and had their dick suck so long that they go and fuck up. And then I get the kid, right? So I'll go get the kid and I'll try to fix them. Well, listen, if it's not harder where I'm at, then they would get kicked out again. So I'm going to be harder and make it harder than it is at the four-year level. So they don't get kicked out. They don't fucking get thrown in jail. They don't um, do those things. So 227 kids I've sent Division One, which is a new, JUCO national record. Wow, man. 27 in the NFL. Not one until last month has ever been kicked out of a four-year school or gone to jail. Not one. So I had my first kid get kicked out of school – um, for a domestic violence charge, and I'm still looking into the whole incident because I don't know the whole thing. But, um, you know, loved the kid to death, great kid. He had a temper issue, which obviously that's probably what happened. No, not, a, not a rape or anything, but it was a, it was a violent charge, throwing, throwing a cup or something. But at the same time, he was the first kid, man, and, and that's, right. that's it right there. That right there hurts me more than anything right now because – that's the first kid out of 227, 18 yeah. years of coaching that's left, ever left me and got kicked out. And I pride myself on that. If you look right. at the other schools on the show uh, before me, East Mississippi and all, those kids don't make it. So there's only been a few that's made it. And, right. you know, you can say what you want to say, but I, I, I want to make sure that I'm going to grind them. But I'm going to grind them with some uh, – for every time I motherfuck them or – or, or, or yell at them or what have you. There's also a hat on the ass and a hamburger, you know? Yeah. So, it so you get to Independence. Um, your first year there, they want to they wanna film the show, correct? Did, did you want uh, them to film? Did you want them year. to film? Oh, second, second year. Okay. Did you, did you want them to film at film first? You, you're a little no. skeptical about it. No, no. I said, fuck no. No. <laughs> uh, your first, uh, you went 9-2, won a bowl game. Uh, the last season of the show, you had high expectations, but didn't go as planned. But talk your experience overall at, at Independence. Yeah, so year one, we take the school. That's still my funnest year, man. We took the program over. Yeah. There were shit. They hadn't won a game in three years. They've only won like two games in ten, some shit like that. So we took the program over, and I knew it was a complete rebuild. I was like, listen, wins and losses are nothing. I knew. I already had told everybody that on campus, this is the thing. You got to give me a three year. Um, this is a three year plan of success. I always have a three-year plan going into places I have to rebuild. I said, you don't have a weight room. You don't have coaches' offices. You don't have a facility. You don't have a field. I mean, this place is, like, probably the worst in, in the country. So I said, this is the deal. So we'll build a culture, gut all the shitbirds, start over, get these kids to understand what class is going to be like, how they're going to sit in the front row. We're going to start building things. I, I hit up some former players of mine that are in the NFL. We, we got a weight room built real quick. We got some offices. We, we established a foundation. So once I got that, you know, wins and losses, wins will come. Uh, but you got you to gotta create – you got to make the thing around you comfortable and set the tone basically on what you expect. And then when you expect so much and you grind the shit out of the coaches and the players like I do – you want to have some decent places that they can call home because you're in the middle of nowhere. So we put a weight room right on top of right next to our offices and made it probably as sweet as in the country. And, and, uh, and we built, I built coaches offices. So all the coaches are in the same area and there was some staff continuity and, and, and things like that. And we changed the culture and, and obviously we went five and four year one. Right. And uh, we lost four games, like combined like 14 points. We should have won maybe three or two or three of those. And you're talking about a bowl game year one. But it was fine with me. I was like, you know what? This is what it's expected because we don't – this place don't know how to win yet. So – but doing that and beating three teams for the first time in 30 years, uh, which we did year one, we already knew that this was going to be a great place. And then year two, obviously, we win it all. Uh, Netflix comes because they find out how much talent I brought in. And they reached out to some Division One coaches, and they said, "Look, man, you want a guy that's going to be that's going to really show how how this thing really is, and how we really want to be, but we can't right. do this because we make millions of dollars. Then you better go here because they have the best players in America, yeah. and he's the realest dude uh, you'll ever hear talk to these kids. And the kids, will, you'll see these. Bill Walford is after you see him calling a motherfucker twenty times. 
And he was like, no way. And so they came and interviewed me. They called and I said, no, I told my staff, no way. Cause I didn't know about the show. I didn't really know. I didn't watch okay. the first one. And uh, I said, you know, I have no interest. Cameras didn't bother me. Uh, they still don't. It's the fucking microphone. And so mm. I knew that shit was going to cost me. So, but I wasn't going to change for a fucking microphone or a camera because right. those kids still needed me in the way that I had to give them, you know, they needed that raw and uncut uh, uh, approach because people don't realize, man, it's, it's the parent at home, the single mom for a hundred or 99% of them. Uh, they cuss at them a lot more than I do. People right. don't know that. They think that I'm just the devil. Well, th that's why I've never had an issue with a parent that a, of a kid that I brought to the campus. Cause those parents knew when I recruited them and they knew when I had them that they were never in harm's way with me, but they were going to get fucking molded and turned from a, right. and, you know, from a boy to a man. And the, the mom was okay with it. So, you know, that's the, people don't realize like all these haters out on social media, like you motherfuckers weren't there and you don't no, know. Sorry. They only put 16 hours of film out of filming me for 3,500 hours. Jeez. So you saw 16 hours. Like you don't see Nick Saban come in and say how well orchestrated this place is. And this is the mm -hmm. best Juco, the well, most well-mannered kids he's ever seen. They don't show it. Why? Cause I don't know. They want ratings, right? Yeah, I guess the hate the hate brings the ratings for sure. Yeah. So do you think that you touched that a little bit? You think they betrayed you a little bit wrong? I mean, I I my personal opinion, I have to agree or not. I feel like they did. You know what I mean? Because I'll I'll short give you a little short story. Um, I I went to Sac State and uh, I started as equipment manager there, and then I made my way up a little bit. But um, you know, I I was around the football environment, right? I got to see how coaches were. I got yelled at, and I'm I'm not even part of the team like that. You know what I mean? And yeah, yeah. it's all part of it, but. I understood that, you know, playing sports and stuff, so I didn't take it personal. But, you know what I mean? You know, they portray coaches wrong. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, we want to win. It's not just on the field. It's, it's off the field, and we want to win all the time. And I think that's what coaches try to bring that culture. And I think you did a great job. And But, you know, TV, that's ratings. And I think it's bullshit. But, you know, I, yeah. I think with you, I think it's your opinion too. But it's either they hate you or they love you. You know what I mean? And, hey, we, we love you here. And yeah. I think – it's fucking dope. You think that that's part of it too? Like, you know, betraying you wrong a little bit? You think they did that? I mean, this is the thing. The producer does a great job. They just want to end me for my season. My season only, though. Just so okay. everybody's good. Uh, they needed my fucking ass for the fucking Emmy. But uh, they, the, I'm just fucking with Greg Wiley because he might hear this. But Greg Wiley did a great job. He's a great producer. This is the thing. You only know what you know in this world. It's an experience-based life we live hands-on that's why i think education is overrated because this is based on hands-on like there's more billionaires in america right now without a degree than there are with a degree just so we know that's sad though and, yeah and there's not enough trade schools there's not enough entrepreneurs programs mm -hmm. there's just not enough welding construction there's no hands-on work where it's is really needed in the country because construction is never going to go out of work yep. you're, you're always going to need it you're going to need painters you're going to need welders you're going to need all this but we're teaching kids bullshit ass history classes about shit that never really happened so there's just there's just a there's a bunch of shit wrong man but the bottom line is you know they they he only knew what he knew he didn't play football he didn't know what juco was about he never knew so when he saw it it probably was eye-opening jaw-dropping whatever you want to call it for okay, him okay. That makes sense he, he he did what he did and he did it the best way but he doesn't know and I, I think now he kind of uh sees sees how to do it a little bit probably yeah. if he did it again with juco and, and a guy like myself but so i'm not mad man you know i don't hold grudges i just you know like i like i say man all the time and i think i created this quote but i always because I actually did it at Indy. I took my rearview mirrors out of our buses, and I said, listen, we're not looking in the fucking rearview mirror no more because it only takes away from what's ahead. So I said, quit looking in the fucking rearview mirror, look forward, and I don't regret nothing, man. I, there's nothing I can take back. I mean, there's no nothing we can do. So, I mean, it is what it is. You accept it or you don't. Um, it really don't bother me. I sleep at night either way because my kids graduate. They do what they do. So and I have big shoulders. I uh, – I took it on. I accepted it. So it's on me at the end of the day because I'm, I'm held accountable for the whole deal. Those assistant coaches, those players, they're not accountable. People don't realize that. They're mm -hmm. responsible. There's a huge difference. Okay. There's a huge difference. So, yeah. so they're responsible for each other. They're responsible for the, themselves. And then ultimately, damn it. And uh, 
So, hey, I take it, man. I mean, that's what it is. And I never shied away from it. I never made excuses. It is what it is. And uh, we put our, you know, footprint in the sand and, and there's, we made history and, and there's nothing that anyone can say or do about it. We had more kids scholarships than anybody in America and in my tenure and uh, with the highest GPA, with the highest transfer rate and um, the highest retention rate. So, you know, there's nothing you can say or do about it. I mean, just, you know, you got these people that just want to hate about uh, shit that they do not know about. But uh, so if they depicted me wrong, I don't know. They, I wish they would have shown some other things. Okay. Um, they don't show me coach at all. Um, just so everybody's clear, I ran the offense. I coached the quarterback. I, fucking, right. I did a lot of other shit they don't show. Um, but I also scheduled buses, fucking travel, food. I, you talk about – like, Buddy Stevens at East Mississippi don't have to do any of that. Um, this guy at, at Laney, he don't have to do that. Not like I had to. Not with right. kids in your dorms. Not with kids. See, it's easy to go home and sleep with your wife or whoever and not have a worry in the world because those kids are out in apartments or what have you, and you don't really got to worry. I know how the business is. Right. I never could do that or be that way. But secondly, I had coaches on campus monitoring dorms. All my kids were in one place. Um, it's a good and a bad thing because fights occur, weed smoking. You don't want guys around females. You get allegations. There's a lot of other things. So with every positive, there's a negative, and there's a different – it's a different uh, – it's a whole different ball game, California, compared to Kansas. Um, so, you know, it's just one of those deals. But um, – no, I don't change nothing, man. It is what it is. I, I accept it. And, um, and so, you know, it's just one of those deals. I, I don't, uh, I don't regret it, but you know, at the same time, I wish they would have shown a few other things. Um, right, right, right. No, but, you know, they, they try to put, regardless of how they try to portray you or whatever, you know, you, your athletes speak louder than words and then they've never, and I've, as far as I can recount, I've never heard one of your, your athletes say anything bad about you. So that speaks a lot. Yeah, it's never happened, brother. Never has. So I mean, I gotta, I gotta ask. The the, the 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 jacuzzi is it portable? You take it back home to Cali with you? No, man, I sold that bitch, man. Oh, I sold come on, coach. Home. Yeah, so I'll, I'll get a new one here shortly. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna bite off uh, you, coach. Yeah, you know how it is, man. So, <laughs> yeah, I, gotta a, I gotta get a new one, man. What? A, and then you also you're you're a big visor guy. No no fit a cap flex fit nothing. That, that's nah, your thing. Man, I'm the a visor. visor guy, man. I got a fucking awkward looking size head, man. I don't like hats don't look good on me, man. I never fucking rock the hat, man. I, I'm a, I'm like the fucking the Vietnam rice patty hat wearing cat, or I'm a I'm a, I'm a visor, man. Uh, it, works. it works for sure. And then and then uh, we gotta ask, you know, why Cadillacs? Oh man, just growing up in the hood, man. That's what we yeah, drew. That was that, that was the car. Like. That was the whip. That was the whip. Smooth, fast, comfy. You know, leather shit it was one of those deals sunroof smoke a cigar drive down the coast that's just what we did you know and i have one coach i have one too uh you and you mentioned it plenty of times what's the what's what's up with the word cat there was no dogs growing up in cat compton or what no nah, keep man. using the word cat. cat yeah cat was uh that was the thing man dog came out man in probably like 90 west first okay. time i started hearing dog uh yeah yeah cat's been around man since i know 50s 60s and okay. Think, all right. I think growing up by, you know, I grew up in an all blood neighborhood in Compton, obviously, and those older cats back before Bloods and Crips really were beefing like that, even though they've been beefing for a long time, everyone called each other blood oh, because okay. it meant family. It meant, right, right. You know, so young blood. Young blood was a huge thing back in the day growing up when I was a little kid. And uh, it didn't mean blood or cuz, it was just, a, it was young blood right. meaning. It was our family, and so, you know, Cat was right in there with Young Blood, and and uh, obviously that's what I kind of grew up on. So I've always said the word Cat, but I say dog here and there. But you okay. know, we got, but uh, you know, OG cats use Cat. All right, that's gotcha. Now I know. Now you um, you're also an entrepreneur. Now you have your own whiskey and cigar line called Slap Dick Whiskey Cigar. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. What made you want to do that? Man, you know, I, I didn't. Uh, shit, people came approaching. People hit me up, man. They wanted me to do this, this, and this. I'm just like, shit. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm chilling. Uh, 
Fuck it, why not, man? I mean, you know, strike while the iron's hot. And, uh, and you know, me being who I am, man, I wasn't going to accept mediocrity. I said, if we're going to do this and you want to do this, the same person that made my whiskey with me is also E-40s. Um, okay. So Mike Jackson, he makes a lot of people, some New York, New Jersey housewives. He does a lot of people um, that's known. And, you know, it's uh, it was a, it was an opportunity. So I was like, you know what, fuck it, let's do it. And so – Took a year and a half, two years almost to blend it the way I wanted it. And now you got a lot of celebrities out there that we send it out to that are, you see, if you see, notice they've been posting how great it is. They've been buying 15 bottles themselves. Like it's, it's got to going, it's going good. And it's a, it's a special, unique taste in whiskey, I think. And uh, with the Cali swag on it that nobody has in their whiskey, which is a nectar agave, which is in tequila. Okay. Um, now we're so talking. It, huh? Now we're talking. I'm a tequila guy, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you know, that's why we 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 wanted to be different, and so it's a Kentucky-based whiskey, five-year age barrel, but we blended it with some agave and some things, and and uh, and I was in the process throughout, and uh, had my hands in it, and actually blended it, and and we mashed it, and and uh, fermented it. We did everything, man. So it was a good thing, and I want to be hands-on. Same with cigar, the Nicaraguan-based leaves, and. Uh, Shit, they're pretty good too, man. And we're we're gonna continue that process. We're gonna make a whole line of cigars, different ones, different sizes, different flavors. So uh, we just got the first one out, and people are liking them so far. And so we'll see how it goes, man. And you know, doing those things, um, it's 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 been good. Where, where where could people find that, Coach? Where where could people get the you know cigar and some whiskey? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the whiskey is uh, we launched last Saturday, August first. Well, now, okay. but we uh. We launched on the first, and uh, it's CoachJVStore.com is the is where you can get the whiskey. So uh, you know www.CoachJVStore.com. Yeah, we'll check that out. And check that out, and uh, you can order the whiskey right now. And then uh, we'll be in stores throughout the country uh, probably within two months. Um, and then the cigars are www.SlapDickCigars.com. So. Those are where you get the cigars, Slap Dick Cigars, and then Coach JB Store. And you can get those two things online right now. And then we'll be in lounges and, and, and on shelves for the whiskey uh, within a few months. Nice. Congratulations on that, by the way. That's awesome. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, now, you're also the author of a book now, Hate Me Now, Love Me Later, which you guys can catch probably, I'm sure it's on Amazon and everything, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barnes & Noble, Amazon. Number one bestseller, man. It was crazy. Uh, no, was Coach. There. Yeah, it's crazy how it went down, man. I didn't expect that. I uh, said, you know what, though, let's do it, and uh, and we did it, and uh, it ended up being great. And uh, you know, when it was the number one bestseller, man, it was uh, it was ahead of uh, Tom Brady and Tony Dungy. So oh, that just tells you how how well watched that show is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and how crazy it is. But um, so you know, that's kind of uh the deal and i'm still doing personalized signed copies through venmo coach jb12 um on venmo so i'll do a 30 bucks you can get a personalized copy from me since i have a bunch of books and i'm doing those and i post them on social media okay but i sell about 100 of those a, a week now you also started a podcast slap dick podcast what made you want to get to the podcast game you're, i mean i pers i personally think you're perfect for it yeah, you know, yeah. nothing bad yeah. you don't sure your shit i'm still not comfortable at it i don't i didn't want to do it at all that was the least thing i wanted to do of all this other shit i didn't uh, want to do podcasts i'm better at going on someone else's um and then i was like you know i got i got a, a contract and an offer from a company and i was like fuck it man i was like let's brand the name and i said screw yeah. it so um uh, I ran I'm, with I, it. I've been checking it out the past couple of days, yeah, man. I fucking, I love it, man. Me too. I love. I think you're yeah, perfect for it. You know, I had a partner of mine that we was doing it, started it with, and it was going well. And then, uh, you know, the COVID hit, and we we didn't want to. Right. We we got lawyers and different people, man, telling us what you know for me anyway. So I I, I just couldn't have that perception out there that me and him are next to each other. And, you know, all this type of shit that happens that goes into it, man. And so. Um, and then he's got kids and shit, so we didn't want to put it at risk. So we slowed down. So, you know, hopefully I'll get my boy back on uh, with me. But, uh, you know, we just – you know, we got it. I've had some great A-list guests on, and, uh, you know, we'll have some more coming up. But now I said, you know what, I'm going to start being a little more me. And so the last mm. – since I've relaunched it after about a month off, I've uh, – shit, we're getting, you know, about 10,000 downloads. 
close a week now, so it's getting up nice. there. That's dope. So who who do you want to join the show one day? Like who's who's one of your dream guests? Uh, uh man, I don't really care. Shit, I get no. so many. I got people that the company actually gets a lot of people they book for me um, that right. want to come on. Um, but I I go get my partners. You know the Marcellus Whiteys of the world, Eddie Georges. Um, uh, you know, Lawrence Taylor, Matt Barnes, you know, people that oh. are big right now that I, that I like and grew up with, like, um, uh, I get those guys on, but besides that, they'll get me guys that like the Joey chestnuts of the world, hot dog <laughs> eating guy, cats yeah. like that, that I don't know prior, you know, um, right. but they'll get me those type of guys. Um, you know, I had DDP on, I don't know if you know, Diamond Dallas Page, a great wrestler, um, uh, who's a WWF, uh, legend um he was he was good he's got his own yoga uh ddp yoga out there which he gave me a big old thing for free so i gotta start doing some fucking yoga you do yoga coach no i i can't i've never done it but <laughs> if i do it i probably blow up on social media if I do. <laughs> My uh, yoga. so any, any thoughts about the new season last chance you you have any thoughts about that uh not really i i've watched one the first one, I did it out of uh, obligation to uh, some people, and I watched okay. it, um, and I, it exactly what I thought it was. I mean, it's 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 Cali Juco, man. It's not okay. really. Uh, he did a good job by not showing a lot of other things because Cali Juco is real finicky as far as rules, okay. and so I think they did a good job as far as that. Uh, you know, the coach that seems like a great dude. I met him one time at the convention in Nashville in January, uh, but you know, I don't know him. Um, you know, he, it seems like he does a good job with Cali kids. California Juco should be for California kids. It, it's hard to bring out of staters in and house them and feed them. It's just hard. Okay. Yeah. It's, not, it's not for them. It's not very good. It doesn't set them up for success. And uh, so it seems like he does what he did. But, you know, it's ironic because, you know, he won the t- state championship the year before. Mm-hmm. Um, my second year being filmed on, on Last Chance U, our shitty year when we had as much talent as anyone again, but we had a horrible nucleus because of the cameras, in my opinion. Right. That's a whole nother ball game, but especially with coaches and we had horrible nucleus period. Everybody, you name it, administrators, coaches, kids, it was bad. They all want to be on camera. But anyway, the Laney won the state championship in California. They beat a good friend of mine at Ventura. Right. right? So, yeah. So they, they won that and he's the greatest coach in the world. Right. So this year they struggle, mm-hmm. and it's funny because you either love or hate it, bro. I tell you, because you know we went shitty, and I'm the worst coach in America of my last year. Right. Uh, and uh, you know when you're hated more than you're loved, I guess you know all of a sudden after 20 years I can't coach. But I'm curious, can he now not coach either? Right, right. I don't know. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm just calling it a spade a spade, but. Right. Uh, I, you know, I said on my podcast, hey, man, ask that dude uh, if those cameras are, are, are fucking powerful or not. Yep, very true, very true. Now, the state of high school and college football right now, like college football is going to the fucking dumps right now, in my opinion. And I know you touched about it on your podcast a little bit. Talk about that, man. What do you, what do you think where, – where do you see the future of college football going? I think – Man, all you know, the, the sun shines on a dog's ass some days. And I think hopefully this is the day because, uh, you know, hopefully they can make this an t- opportunity to leave the, the non-caring assholes of America. You know what I mean? Right. right. That's what NCAA stands for. So they, they can leave those cats maybe now and break off and create their own deal. And I know the SEC wants to do that. Obviously, I have a lot of friends coaching in that conference. They, they want to go and start their own, basically their own NCAA, which will just be called the SEC, and they'll go grab some teams from other leagues, mm-hmm. and they'll create their own NCAA, so to speak, entity. And if that happens, maybe we can get rid of the non-caring assholes of America and fucking start – doing this the right way because right now they'll fucking suspend a kid or kick him off for eating a piece of pizza that a booster gave them, but they won't say a word about a pandemic. Like they won't even fucking, they won't let you fly your girl to a Rose bowl. They'll suspend chase young, but yep. then they won't fuck. They'll, they'll, they'll suspend 
a kid from Memphis, the number one basketball player in America, yeah. for Penny Hardaway for uh, giving money to his mom, but then you won't fucking defend him when it comes to anything racial, anything when it comes to fucking paying the kid or for his likeness or any type of way, and then they right, won't right. even come forward. Um, and so what's going to happen is – Basketball in the NCAA, to me, is going to be done with very shortly. Yep. I think it's going to be horrible. I, agree, I think they're all going to go to the, you know, the D League or whatever. Yep. The D League, and I think they're going to go overseas. And oh, there's there's already players doing that in the, in oh, the yeah. kids come out of high school and basketball are come, going straight yep. to the G League and yep. taking that route. So I I I agree for sure. Yep. So, um, you know. You need to get that. You need to get that trademark, that NCAA, the, oh. the acronym we have. You need to get a T-shirt made and everything. Yeah. That's, that's good right there. That's money. Yeah, man. I'm, you know, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I, I don't know. I think shit's going to happen that way. I mean, and then they say they're all about the health and, uh, and uh, you know, um, the safety of the kid. Well, no, they're not. They're about their money. That's why it took them so long to finally call off the March Madness and um, and so, you know, it's just one of those deals, man. I think they're just full of shit. They've always been. And, and, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I, hopefully yeah. they do break away. Hopefully they break away from the NCAA. Um, and maybe this is the reason this is the whole, you know, part, this is the, this is what makes it happen. This is what breaks the camel's back. Who knows? Uh, but right now, I mean, there is no commissioner. I've been telling everybody the NCAA or college football needs a commissioner. I've been saying it for years. And without a commissioner, that's why you have the Pac-12 and the Big Ten who cancel. But then you have three other conferences that are saying, our doctors say it's okay. Well, how do your doctors say it's okay, but those other doctors don't? And you got people on different wavelengths, man. And that's just no, there's no leadership. And to me, leaders create more leaders. They don't create more followers. And that's the problem. And so we got too many followers. There's no leadership. It's just like the government. There's no fucking, we don't have a leader. And so it's all fucked up and it just trickles down and shit rolls downhill. And the NCAA college football has no leadership. And that's why you have five different conferences doing five different things. Yep. That's what you have. Uh, that's why it's in jeopardy. And now nobody knows anything. They haven't even had a plan about what scholarship numbers are going to be available. What's the eligibility going to be like, but you're worried about health and, um, and, and, and talking about what your doctors say, but you have no plan going forward. I, I'm a little bit different. I think you can play these 20 year old kids in the spring and the fall. If you wanted to, I don't agree with doing it because I don't think you're going to have quality football. Number one, you're going to have over 100 kids go to the draft. They will not yep. play in the spring. Number two, the quality of football alone because of the weather is going to be shitty. And people haven't talked about that at all. But if you're a quarterback and you're a football guy, you understand you cannot play in fucking State Park or State College, Pennsylvania in January. Columbus, Ohio in January, Detroit, East Lansing, Michigan in January. You're going to be in snow flurries, wind, cold. It's not going to be quality football. And you only have three domes in the Midwest, Indianapolis, Detroit, and fucking Chicago maybe or something. So I don't know where those three are, but I know – how are you going to play all those places in, in the dome with, uh, you know, how many ever teams? I just don't see it working. I don't see – I don't think you can bubble football. Um, I just – I think it's a shit show. I think the best option is fall of 21, and we take a reset, hit the reset button, and, and, and let's hopefully, you know, this thing goes away after the election and fucking uh, we get back on track and there's a vaccine or whatever. and. Right, right. Uh, We'll see, but you know, I just don't. I think you're 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 trying to put a fucking square peg into a round hole right now. There you go. So let's talk a little NFL. Do you have, do you have an NFL team? Nah, I don't even. Oh, what uh, what, what what's a team you're looking at this year that can make some noise, or who do you think is gonna uh, still be dominant? No, I'm a Cowboys fan. This guy's a Raider fan. You know, I'm loving the way our offense is panning out right now. Yeah. Um. No, nah, I don't watch NFL, man. You know, obviously oh. I've been. I've been playing and I've been coaching. So when you coach, you actually work on those damn 
day, so it's not yeah. for 20 years. I haven't really watched it since I played it, and I just have no interest in, in watching it. If you're not, like, doing things that I do, I don't really watch you because it's a waste for me. Um, yeah. Now, I have players playing right now, obviously, um, at that level, so I'll occasionally watch some of them. Um, but I don't have a team, man. I never, you know, I, was, I grew up a Rams fan, obviously, being in L.A., um, so I'm glad they came back, but I, I haven't even cared, you know, watched it, to be honest, watch them or anything. And they play it down here in Home Depot Center, which is shitty. And right. So right. they have a new stadium and all that, but it'll be empty. So it's all fucked up, man. <laughs> Bad timing right now. Yeah. yeah. Coach, but I do know a team that you are a fan of, right? You're a Laker fan, right? What do you think were our chances of winning the championship this year? I don't know, man. I think they need a third score. Uh, yeah. If Kuzma could bring 15 points a game, I a think game, yeah. I say 15 to 20, yeah, yeah, consistently. Uh, well, if they figure it's 20, bro, they're gonna they'll they'll sweep everybody. There's no way. I mean, <laughs> yeah. if he can score 15 points a game, you know, I think they have a shot at it. Uh, but they have no outside shooting, which I think hurts them. They 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 since the bubble started, they look old. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I, maybe it's because they had it wrapped up and. And I think that they will turn it on. I think they have the best two players, obviously. I'm not a LeBron fan at all, but I, 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 they are the best two players, one, two, right, punch, right. Um, in the league. And, uh, you know, I think, I think they'll play the Clippers, obviously. I don't know, man. I, I, I have a gut feeling that the Clippers will get beat early. Early? By somebody. Um, so? Well, because, you know, man, history repeats itself, and – they are what they are, and I've never said a more true thing. You know, the Cleveland Browns are who they are. The Clippers are who they are. Um, they're JV teams, and they never will get over the hump, in my opinion. So unless yeah. Kawhi and them, Doc Rivers can do it, I, right. so be it. But but remember, man, there's 16 banners in, in the Staples Center, and right. not least of them belong to the Clippers. And they've always had a history of uh, – they haven't even been to a Western Conference yeah. final. Taylor so, Swift has more fucking banners up there than Clippers yeah, do. Yeah, it's JV man, and it's a, it's funny all these dick rider and fucking front runners want to be a yeah. Clippers fan all of a sudden. Yeah. And uh, we'll see, man. We'll see what happens. I mean, there's just a lore. There's a history of fucking things out there, and you know, like Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns. All there's all this talent. Da, da, da. I said last year, mm -hmm. I said they fucking will be shitty, and they're like, well, we're <laughs> shitty. Right? And they're gonna be shitty again. I mean, it's just. It's hard to change the culture of, of professional sports, man. I'm just telling you, uh, yeah. especially when you share the same arena of 16 or 15 other banners from another mm -hmm. team. It's hard to get over that hump, and I just don't know if they're going to get over it, man. There's a lot of stigma out there. So we'll see. I think they do have the deepest team, the Clippers, obviously, and all that. But, you know, can they all? it's hard to put a lot of those people together, too. You can't, it's hard yeah. to put in a lot. Of, it's, like, it's like I learned from Belichick, man, you know, He'd rather have five coaches than 25. And I learned that real quick. I had 20 coaches, man. And I, had, you know what? That's 20 personalities, 20 fucking different ideas, right. 20 fucking different fucking opinions. And if you got five of them, they all do those other 15 per people's job. They work harder. They fucking mm -hmm. stay quiet. They have less opinions. And it's probably less drama. And that's similar to the Clippers. I think they have too many head cases. They got too many fucking – People that want the ball, want to do this, want to do right, that. Right. And I think it might hurt them at the end of the day yeah. by, a team, by a team like Denver or, or Utah. Or right. I, I think Houston's shitty. I, I never liked the pieces. I don't think it works. They yeah, I don't think their style is going to work, in my yeah. opinion, either. No way. Uh, you know, well, it looks like the Clippers and Dallas are going to be the first. They're going to they're face yeah. each other. And the way yeah. Luka playing right now, I mean – that guy's going wild, man. But Yeah, they just can't stop nobody. I think Clippers yeah. like sweep them. So it's just it's it's fucked up, but you know he's a great player and all, but I, I don't think they have a shot. Um, and then you know we'll see how it goes, man. I mean, I'll tell you this: everybody's saying, "Oh, Portland's gonna win. Portland's gonna get fucking mud stomped." And, you think so, Coach? Yeah, man. People, Game Dog's going crazy right now, though. Again, they're who we thought they were. And I say the same thing. There's no, they might. I think they might get a game if that. But to beat the what Lakers in seven game series, there's no way. Yeah. There's no shot. What, no shot. Done? what have they done? What have they done? They're the fucking eight seed trying to get in. They, they're not right. nobody. Like people always. Oh man, Nurich is back. So what? Okay. 
Like the okay, Lakers, coach. Have, the Lakers have four seven foot wingmen they can throw at exactly. that motherfucker. Like exactly. I, and then they're saying and that the other kid, hey, what's his name, Hayside or Wayside? Yeah, Wayside. Uh, what's his name? Hassan Wayside. Wayside. So he's yeah. now he could be a role player. Well, that's only two versus four. I mean, and you know, we'll see, man. Nuts shrink up in, in crunch time. You know what I mean? Assholes yeah. get tight. Shit like that happens. We'll see how they are. They don't. They don't have any winners on that team. You know, Carmelo's done what in the league? What's he done? How many wins does he have? Yeah, it's mostly just score the ball. But past that, I mean, Western yeah, Conference I mean, just once, I believe. Yeah. What's What's Lillard won? What's any of them won? Right, Nothing. Right. I mean, there's understand. Kawhi's won on the Clippers, and Doc Rivers has won with Boston. But besides Kawhi. I mean, Danny Green has one. He has two. The same. Yeah. He has the same amount as Kawhi, and he's on the Lakers as a role player. And LeBron has three. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying. You gotta. We'll be all right. Winner, winning, winning actually has a, a a factor that goes into play. It's called the it factor, and we're gonna see who has it because I don't think the Clippers have it. I don't think Portland has it. Dallas don't have it yet. Uh, they just missing too many wing players. I mean, you know, Clippers obviously on paper have long athletic players uh, that can defend and run people at you. They think they can throw so many guys at LeBron and all this, but mm-hmm. you can't throw guys at LeBron when he's fucking running full speed down the <laughs> middle of the court. Like people don't I'm realize. Trained. People don't realize real sports though. Like, what are you gonna do? Put two people right in the middle court and have them run up into them? Like, yeah. you can't. De- you're not gonna defend the dude when the when the pace of the game gets going. Like. Right. That's what people don't understand. That's why small ball has worked so long for what's his name, Dan Tony, mm-hmm. because you can say all this shit. They don't have a center and all this, but they're running and gunning you. They score 140 points, and they're always going to be in the middle mix of it because they score, but they can't. Right. Defend. They can't. They can't slow the game down, which happens in the NBA playoffs. Right. And when the game slows down, to me, I think it helps LeBron and AD without having that third player. Uh, it actually benefits the Lakers, but it's still at the same time they need a Danny Green, who's a good friend of mine now. He's a good dude, man. I've been on his show. Uh, there's a couple people that they need to show up, and hopefully they get Rondo back. Because to me, Rondo's the missing piece. I think Rondo has yeah. those nuts and those guts, and that's what matters. And I think you need that in this uh, playoffs. And I think he'll be back. And I think A.B. Bradley does hurt him on the, on the edge. Man, Big time. For sure. Big Just time. defending and hitting threes. I mean, yep. that's huge. But uh, I think they can succumb that and overcome it if they can uh, get Rondo back and they can find another guy that can hit a fucking shot because LeBron will create it. It just depends on if he can shoot it. So we'll see. But, so what's uh, next? What's next for Coach Brown? Do you want to coach again, Coach? Or what's what's gonna happen? Yeah, I, I don't know right now, brother. I'm not right now. I don't uh, at all. I have no burning desire, right. man. I'm just doing my thing. I'm trying to, you know, prop this COVID shit. I mean, there's no rush right. for me. I mean, it's it is what it is, man. I, yeah. I'm I'm dealing with that, and it's probably been, you know, probably better for me to be honest. It sucks for everybody else, but. COVID's been, you know, nobody's hiring anyway. Nobody's looking yeah, for nobody true. right now. There's there's jobs open out there in, in JUCO, but they're not. They're just gonna have an interim guy because there's no 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 future is known. Nobody knows what's going on, right. so they're, they're not gonna hire nobody new. So it's just one of those things. It doesn't. We'll see how it goes, and if uh, if it if it's something that's the right opportunity that presents itself, then so be it. If not, shit. Hopefully you're doing, my whiskey you're doesn't doing do pretty it. well for yourself. You're doing fucking right. good, man. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I'm always good at hustle, man. You know, hustle. People think when you say you're a hustler, that means you're like a, you're out there gang banging, yeah, drug dealing and there. shit. Yeah, drug dealing and shit. Hustle, man, means that you create income in multiple ways. It don't mean you're out there doing dirt. I've been a hustler right. my whole life, man. I had a beach house with no taxable income my whole life. I mean. It, they're just things that people don't realize that you have to do to, to, to do it. And if you're hustling, you're hustling. So, you know, like Jay-Z said, don't knock my hustle, motherfuckers. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right, Coach. We have some uh, – it's called what, What's Handing Questions. It's either this one or that one. Very simple, all right? All right. All right. Love winning or hate losing more? Hate losing more. Winning's expected. I, I, I agree. All right. This is a tough one. Cadillac or Lambo? Oh, Cadillac. Fuck. All day. <laughs> all fucking day. High scoring game or de- defensive battle? Um, high scoring. 
Really? Well, as a head coach, defensive battle, but as an OC. Okay, I, there you yeah, go. There you go. You. Okay, that makes sense. All right, dominant D-line or dominant O-line? You cut out. Dominant D-line or dominant O-line? Uh, well, it's a kind of a fucking uh, oxymoron. I don't know. Because you can't have one. I mean, if you have both, they're going to be sitting there. Uh, as a head coach, I mean, right. shit. I mean, I don't know, brother. That's a hard one. You got to have both. Uh, right, right. You got to choose one, uh, though, coach. Just one. You got to. Uh, D-line, because we'll shut everybody out. Okay, there you like go. It. There you go. Okay. Summer or winter? Uh, summer. Okay. All right. This is a good one. Stronger arm, Malik Henry or Coach Brown? Fuck me all day. Oh, fuck it, day. <laughs> Let's go. A uh, glass of whiskey or smoke a cigar? Oh, you can't do one without the other, brother. You got to choose one. You got to choose one, Coach. Cigar. Yeah, I thought so, too. Mm -hmm. All right, Belichick or Brady? Um, Belichick. Okay, I agree, Coach. All right, Coach. We want to thank you once again for joining That's How You Feel podcast, man. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And take, just take it, I know you're a busy guy, so just taking the time to come, come have a conversation with us. It means a lot to us. Hey, man, it's all good, brother. Hey, you rub everyone. You know, Anthony's a good dude, so I know. Uh, yeah, shout out to Anthony. Shout out sure. to Anthony, yeah, for real. So, uh, you know, hey, man, anytime let me know, and uh, appreciate you guys. Keep grinding. So, hey, yeah, make sure you guys go check out Slap Dick Podcast. Go, go get some whiskey, too, some Slap Dick whiskey, some yeah, cigars. Some cigars. Yeah, yeah, we gotta man. try that too. We we definitely yeah. gotta try that out too. Get his coach. book. You want you for heard sure. the facts? You on that's how you feel podcast shit. Read it now. Fuck. Yeah, get the book. Yes, for hey. sure. The slap dick takeover, man. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a lot of dick going on. <laughs> yeah. Hold up. Wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you Wait, 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 dude, man. I'm not involved in that shit, bro. My Just... fault. <laughs> but make sure to follow. Right, I appreciate you guys, man. <laughs> oh no, yeah, thank you, thank you, coach. All right, guys. Peace. Peace. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at That's How You Feel to get up-to-date news in sports and music, watch hilarious videos, see upcoming guests in the show, and much, much more. Hey, Don B, did we hit him with another one or what? No, we hit him with another one, bro. Yes, sir.